In the last lecture, we learned about this required attribute. So basically, we use this required attribute validator to specify that a model property is required and user must supply a value for that property. And just like this required attribute, we also have other built-in attributes which we can use on a model for model validation. And in this lecture, we are going to talk about some of those built-in validator attributes. And one of the attributes is this string length attribute. And the string length attribute validator specifies the maximum and minimum length allowed for a string property value. Let's understand this with an example. So on this book name property of this book model class, we are already using this required and we are using this display. Now here, we also want to use the string length attribute. And here, we want to specify that the maximum string length, the maximum characters for a book name is allowed is let's say 100 characters. A book name should not have more than 100 characters. So we can specify it like this. Now optionally, if we want, we can also specify the minimum length. So let's say minimum length is going to be 4. And we can also specify the error message. And for the error message, we want to say book name must have 4 to 100 characters. So here what we can do is we have learned that we can specify a placeholder like this and that placeholder gets replaced by the property name or if we are specifying the display name in that case it will be replaced by the display name so here let's specify that placeholder so this placeholder will be replaced by the property name but since we have specified this display attribute also in that case this placeholder will be replaced with this display name so here we want to say book name must have characters between and then we want to specify the minimum and maximum value so here let's specify the placeholder first now the first placeholder this index 0 will be replaced by the property name or display name in this case it will be replaced by this book name but the second placeholder here it will be replaced by the maximum value okay so we want to display the maximum value here. So here we will specify the index as one. So this one will be replaced by the maximum value. And here we will specify three. So this placeholder will be replaced by the minimum value, the minimum length. Okay, so keep in mind that inside this error message for this string length, the first value which we will receive will be the property name. So we can specify a placeholder like this where the index will be zero to replace it with the property name. The second placeholder, the second value which we will receive, that will be the maximum length value. So for that, we can specify the placeholder as one and that will be replaced by the maximum length value. And then the third value which we will have access to inside this error message is the minimum length value. So basically this value. Okay, so this value we will receive for index two. And here it should be 2 and not 3. So let's go ahead and let's test it out. Let's run this application. Let's go to Postman. And from there, let's make a request. Now here we are specifying the book ID. We are specifying the author. Let's also specify the book name. And you see, currently we are specifying the value for this book name as test. Now if I say maybe ABC here, then this value should not be accepted because we have specified that the minimum length for the book name should be 4 and the maximum length should be 100. So if I go ahead and if I make a request, here it has hit the breakpoint. Let me remove these breakpoints from here and let's continue. So here you will see book name must have characters between 4 and 100. So this is the custom validation error message which we are returning in the response. Okay, so using this string length, you can specify the maximum length of the string value which you want to receive for your property. And optionally, you can also specify the minimum length and the error message. Now keep in mind that this string length can only be used on properties of type string. You cannot use it on properties of type number or boolean or any other data type. This can only be used on a string data type. Next, we have this range attribute. So range attribute validator specifies the minimum and maximum numerical value allowed for a numeric field. This range can only be used on a numeric field. You cannot use it on a 
string value. Let's understand this with an example. So here, let's go ahead and let's create one more property. This property is going to be of type decimal. And let's call this property as price. Okay, now let's say for the book price, we are only going to accept values between 0 and 9.99. So let's go ahead and let's use the range attribute for that. And there we can specify the minimum and maximum value. So let's say the minimum value should be 0 and the maximum value is going to be 9.99.99. And optionally, you can also specify the error message. And in the error message again, we will have access to the property name, the minimum value, and the maximum value. So here we can say price. So for that, I'm going to use this placeholder zero must be between minimum and maximum value. Now here, the second value which we will receive, that will be the minimum value. And the third value which we will receive, that will be the maximum value. In case of string length, the second value which we receive is the maximum value and the third value which we receive is the minimum value. But in case of range, the second value which we will receive that will be the minimum value and the third value which we will receive that will be the maximum value. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's reload this application again and let's go to Postman. There, let's specify one more key. It is going to be price and there, let's say I am passing the value as 2000. Now 2000 is greater than triple nine. So this value will not be accepted. Let's make a request. And in the response, you see, we have received this error message. Price must be between zero and 999. And we have also our previous error message. Book name must have characters between four and hundred. So for the book name also, we are providing an invalid value. And for the price also, we are providing an invalid value. So there in the model, there will be two validation errors. And for those validation errors, we are receiving the validation error messages in the response. Another validation attribute which we can use is the regular expression. And regular expression validator attribute specifies a regular expression pattern which the value should follow to be a valid data for the property on which it is used. So for example, for this book name property, we only want to have characters and spaces in the book name. We don't want special characters in the book name or any numeric value in the book name. For that, we can use the regular expression validator attribute. So here, let me go ahead and let me specify another validator attribute. And this time I'm going to use regular expressions. And there we can specify some regular expressions. So here for the book name, we only want to have characters and spaces. Now, if you remember, the regular expression pattern starts with this cap sign and dollar. And in between this, we can write our regular expression. So here I'm going to use square brackets. And in that, I will specify that for the book name, we want characters from A to Z in lowercase, characters from A to Z in uppercase, and we want spaces. No other characters will be allowed in the book name. Let's go ahead and let's run this again. Let's go to Postman and let's test it out. So here in the book name earlier, we were specifying this book name value ABC. Now, since it has only three characters, it is not a valid value because a book name must have at least four characters. So let me go ahead and let me specify some book name. I will call it test and I will also include maybe numbers. So test one, two, three. If I make a request here, you will notice that we have that error message. The field book name must match the regular expression this regular expression. So this is the default error message coming from regular expression class. But we can also change the error message. So let's go back to Visual Studio. And there, let's also specify the error message. And here, let's say book name is not valid. A simple error message like this. Let's read on this application. Let's go back to Postman and now let's make a request again. And this time we should receive our custom validation error message that book name is not valid. Okay, but if we specify a valid book name for the book name, which includes only characters and spaces, in that case, we should not get this error message.
Then we have this email address attribute validator. This email address attribute validator validates the email address format for a property of the model class. In the same way, we also have this phone attribute validator and it validates that a data field value is a well-formed phone number. Basically, you can use these attribute validators to validate if a value coming for an email field, if it is a valid email address or not, or if a value coming from a phone number field, if it is a valid phone number or not. Let's actually see that with an example for email address. So here, let me go ahead and let me create a new property. This property is going to be of type string and I'm going to call this property as maybe author email. Okay, and on this property, I'm going to use email address attribute validator. Okay, and here we can also specify the custom error message. And let's say email format is not valid. Let's go ahead and let's run this application. Let's go to Postman. And there, let's add a new field, author email. Okay, and let's say abc at xyz.com. So in this case, this email is a valid email address because it has this at symbol and it has this dot com. So if I make a request here, we should not receive any validation error message for the email field. But if I remove this at from here, and now if I make a request, you see we have this validation error message, email format is not valid. So you can use this email address validator for validating the email address field and this phone validator for validating a phone field. Then we also have this URL validator. And this validator validates that the property has received a proper URL format. Now here, I'm not going to show any example for this URL attribute validator, but you have got the point. Next, we have this compare attribute validator. And this attribute validator validates that two properties in the same model has received same value. Let's see that with an example. Usually, a real world scenario for using a compare validator will be when you want to compare the password and confirm password fields in your user registration form. But here, since we have this book class, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two properties, maybe field one and field two. It's going to be of type string. And let's call this as field one. And let's also create another property. And let's call it as field two. So here we want to compare, we want to check if we have received the same value for field one and field two or not. So on this field two, I'm going to use the compare validator. And to this compare validator, first we need to pass the name of the property with which we want to compare it. In this case, we want to compare it with field one. And then we can specify the validation error message. So if the field values are not matching, in that case, we can say field one does not match field two, a custom validation error message. Let's run this application again. Let's go to Postman. There, let's add field one and field two. Let's say field one is ABC. Let's also add field two. And let's say field two is XYZ. If I go ahead and if I send a request, here we should have this validation error message. Field one does not match field two. But in the field two, if I also specify ABC, and now if I make a request, we should not have that validation error message because now both field one and field two has the same value. And as I mentioned, the real world scenario where we can use this compare validator attribute is when you want to compare the value for password field and confirm password field. So here I can call it as password and this one as confirm password. Okay, so here we want to compare if the value which we have received for the confirm password, if it matches the value which we have received for the password field or not. For that, we are using this compare attribute validator. 
Now let me go ahead and let me comment these two properties because it is not correct in this book model context. And finally, we have this validate never attribute. So this validator specifies that a property should never be validated. In your model class, if there is any property which you don't want to validate, you're going to accept any type of value for that property. In that case, you can use this validate never. For example, let's say you never want to validate the value which is coming for this author property. You can simply use validate never. Okay, now this validate never, it is present inside this namespace, microsoft.asp.tetco.mvc.modelbinding.validate namespace. This validate never validator, it is not coming from component model.data annotation namespace. It is present in this namespace. Okay, so now what will happen is this field, this author field, it will never be validated. You can pass any value for this author property. And during the model validation, this author property will not be validated. All right, so this is all from this lecture. If you want to learn more about the built-in attribute validators, you can always check out the Microsoft documentation. So here you can learn about all the built-in validators which we have in ASP.NET Core. And if I scroll down, here you can see all the built-in validators. So we have URL, remote, string length, required, regular expression range. So most of them we have already talked about. You can also see this credit card validator and it validates the property has a credit card format or not. So you can learn more about these built-in validators from this Microsoft documentation. I'll share this link in the description. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.